All right, Nico, can you say welcome to another episode of Healthy Births, Happy Babies? It's a happy episode. Um, happy babies. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Healthy Births, Happy Babies. I'm Dr. Jay Warren. I'm the host of this podcast that is all about pregnancy and birth, and postpartum care and baby's care, because I really believe that if you take really good care of yourself during the pregnancy and you're healthy, that's going to make the birth go that much better. And if the birth goes well, that's going to do two things. One, you're going to have a better postpartum recovery, but also your baby's going to come into this world that much easier and gentler and more naturally. And that's going to set all of you up, the whole family, to launch into familyhood in a much more powerful, much healthier, much happier way instead of being stressed by health challenges or other traumas that could have happened and been prevented. So that's why I put this podcast out. And if you are a longtime listener or you're just starting listening to the podcast and have scrolled through our episodes, uh, you'll notice a growth that's happened. So when we first started out, you'll notice the episodes were very prenatally heavy. Uh, it was all about pregnancy, uh, nutrition, exercise, birth prep, uh, all those kind of things. And as our podcast has grown up, we're starting to move more into postpartum care and baby's care. And the next evolution of things is what today's topic is really going to start on, uh, is about on parenthood. You know, there's so much energy goes into getting ready for the birth. You know, then during pregnancy, it's about uh, prenatal care and what to eat and what not to eat and how to get some sleep and what birth provider to use and what classes to take, all this stuff, getting ready for birthday, which is absolutely important. And we teach a lot about that. But then afterwards, Parenthood starts, and that's a big, big challenge. It's so fun, and it's so rewarding, and it's really, really stressful. So with the addition of other episodes around, you know, breastfeeding support and um, how to choose a pediatrician and how to get your baby to sleep through the night, all those kind of things, um, I wanted to add in more and more. But this segment, I mean, today's one episode, but we'll be doing more on it, it is about kind of issues, um, topics that are important to you as a parent that either you're facing, and hopefully you can shed some light on things to give you some tools to help while you're in the trenches with it at that time, or if you are not yet a parent or not yet at that um, juncture of things or whatever the topic might be, you're going to hear it and have some reference for later on down the line, either to prevent some challenges or while you're going through it to know you're not alone and there are tips and tools and there's resources to help you with that. So uh, some of these on parenthood episodes will be myself sharing what I hear as I'm working with parents as the um, as they bring in their newborn or they're doing postpartum care or uh, just things that we see a lot of parents here at the center being challenged by and wanting to give us some information to kind of help pre-frame it. Uh, and that brings us to today's episode, which is up all night. Now, this is something I'm, I'm going to do an episode on kind of the first three months to really kind of shed light on what it's really like, um, not in a fear-based way, not in a um, something to to scare you about it or something to look forward to dread. It's just there's a lot of realities about the first three months that I know for me, I wish I knew as a parent um, and as a dad and would have made things a lot easier um, just knowing about them or being able to do some extra work to kind of prompt them. But um, one small aspect of those first three months is being up all night and that's something that is a really big challenge um, with a newborn. And it's a challenge as a parent, you know. So as you might have known from listening to past episodes, my son, he's three and a half years old. Knock on wood, uh, we did not spend a lot of sleepless nights with him. Uh, he did well through the night. He wasn't a, like, 
fall asleep and sleep through the night right away type of kid, nor is he even now, but it's not like we're up for hours and hours with him. With the exception of last night, <laughs> Nico is sick uh, or is sick. And last night was just one of those nights where he could not fall asleep um, without coughing, um, laying down. So, you know, I spent a couple hours last night in the chair with him holding up so he could sleep because if I laid him down, he was going to um, start coughing again. So, you know, it was one of those things where it wasn't up all night. I did get some sleep, but not a lot, not as much as I'm used to. And again, knock on wood, I've only had to do that with Nico a couple of times. But there's a lot of parents I work with, with in the first couple months especially where they're just not getting any sleep at all. And what I wanted to tell you about in that is very little sleep in the first couple months is a reality and it's a big challenge. Sleep deprivation is so weird and it's something that I've seen day in, day out um, clinically working with the parents that I have over the years. But now as a parent and going through that newborn experience, I <laughs> appreciate it in a totally different way. Um, again, I said I wasn't doing sleepless nights where I wasn't getting any sleep, but intermittent sleep feels like no sleep at all. And so especially for mamas that are doing feedings around the clock, even though, you know, you are getting sleep in between time, getting a couple of hours sleep before you start the process all over again with a feeding at midnight and then 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and then again um, in the morning or even multiple times that the baby's cluster feeding, it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, there are so many studies out there about how sleep deprivation um, can change not only just physically and um, aches and pains will show up because your body's just not getting any restorative sleep, and that's even harder in a postpartum period because you have so much recovery to do after nine months of pregnancy, let alone uh, the birth, but mentally it affects you. You know, it can really make you more prone to depression, um, irritability. I mean, there's so many stressors that come on with a newborn that uh, just challenges a couple anyway, but you, you throw sleep deprivation on top of it and, you know, the bickering and the fighting and the eye rolling and stuff, it just, it can be really, really hard. It's a really hard time, but I will tell you in the first three months type of sense, it gets better. It's uh, not something that would go on forever. It's not sustainable forever. So thank goodness it changes. Um, but if you are having challenges because your baby or yourself aren't sleeping well throughout the night. And again, a normal cycle in the first couple months is round the clock feedings every three to four hours is this groundhog day of <laughs> just going over and over again. That's normal, but you know, baby should be waking up hungry. If hungry, they feed, they go right back to sleep and you're able to go right back to sleep. Um, if it's something where your baby's waking up and up for hours and hours, either awake and wanting to play or fussy and irritable or, you know, even worse, where if they're just crying incessantly throughout the night, then that's something to definitely look into, whether it's um, something where they might be having challenges digestively and then need to look at their digestion or something's off in their system where they're just still recovering from the birth trauma and they might be stressed and de-stressing them that way. Uh, or if it's something where, you know, baby's sleeping fine, but mama can't fall asleep and isn't falling asleep because of anxiety, that's something um, to look at as well. Uh, when I'm working with a newborn and asking about sleep patterns and how do they do during the night and how do they sleep during the day, all those things is really important. But one of the questions I'm always asking also is, and how are you sleeping? Um, talking to mom, um, because if baby is able to fall back asleep after a feed at two in the morning, but mom's up for that whole time. Um, we really want to solve that problem because mom needs a lot of sleep um, to recover from things. And then if you go and deplete it into the day, that makes things even uh, more challenging. So with the up all night, it's something to really as a team with your partner to manage together um, where that might be one of you need a night off and the other one takes things on and does feedings and diaper changes, or if they're crying, one person takes um, baby while the other one can get some rest. Uh, I know that's a strategy that really worked for us as a couple. Um, 
And then there's other times where, you know, like I said before, either there's insomnia or anxiety problems with mom um, recovering from the birth process or babies having challenges in that way to really like seek out help that way. Um, first and foremost, knowing that sleep and deprivation is real and um, being up at night is a challenge. Um, it's just part of the newborn life, but it should get easier and easier. Um, the first three months are really challenging. And then at the three month mark, there's a change because baby's doing a little better. You're getting a little more sleep. You feel a little bit more like yourself. The six month mark is um, even more so where a baby's in a rhythm, getting longer and longer and stretches. Again, maybe not sleeping all the way through the night, but getting larger chunks and you're starting to feel much more much more like yourself um but if you're hitting up against like six months and and nighttime is really really a challenge then definitely get help whether it's talking to the um, your own ob or the pediatrician about what might be going on with yourself or the baby uh, having some de-stressing work on the baby whether it's chiropractic care or craniosacral for yourself chiropractic care craniosacral or acupuncture massage all kinds of different things um can really, really help because when we're sleeping, we do 90% of our res restoration. Hormonal levels change um, to do the regenerative work throughout um, damage throughout the day. And if we're not getting consistent sleep, your body starts breaking down. And again, during pregnancy, you might have already found yourself in a uh, intermittent sleep loop because of the discomfort you can feel, especially in third trimester. Again, you're gonna be in that in the first couple months um, and maybe even beyond that. But if you're not sleeping at night, you need to make sure you're trying to do as much as possible during the day about sleeping when baby sleeps during the day or um, getting some help to be able to get that rest um, even if it's just downtime, not doing errands because baby's finally um, fallen asleep and um, cleaning up the house or doing dishes or cooking and the like, try and find resources um, to do those things so that you can fill up your tank with rest because sleep, sleep, sleep is so important um, for baby's health. Obviously, like their brain is doing amazing changes in the grains that they're doing in these first couple months, and even the first year, year two. Sleep is a really important part of that um, for baby's health, but then also for you. Everybody knows that if you've had, you know, bad couple nights sleep, you're just not yourself. You're a little uh, shorter fused, not as much energy, not as motivated to do the things that you enjoy doing. And then you add on top of that the stress of having a newborn and trying to figure out newborn and what does that cry mean and what is... Um, what do these signs mean? Uh, that's just all really challenging. And so if you've got a sleep deprived mind, everything's going to be fuzzy and everything's going to be just distorted. And so sleep, sleep, sleep is really important. And to really ask your partner to be on board um, with that, whether it's, you know, moms that need a break because of feedings during the night or um, being up with night, um, partner picking up that slack and um, switching gears, or it might be the other way around. You know, it might be that um, the partner's been doing a lot of that work at night um, because mom's been home, but um, partner needs a break as well. So understanding that um, I had a <laughs> instructor in chiropractic school that was training us for board exams and he, he always said, sleep is a weapon, you know, use it as a weapon. I don't like the, like the violent imagery of that, but it's, it's such an important tool to make sure one, you can physically recover mentally and emotionally you're sustained and you're available for your little one. So knowing even later on down the line, like my kid was three and a half and he was sick and, you know, thankfully he's uh, doesn't get sick too often, but when he does, it's rarely affecting nighttime like it did last night. But when you do have those sleepless nights and you're super tired, like don't try and do the same things the next day that you would if you got a great A at hours of sleep, you know, make adjustments to things. Even today, I did the same thing. I had a couple of calls for the podcast um, set up to do some pre-chat things um, that 
just I rescheduled because I needed to have some extra time and um, to take care of some things and just be rested because I wasn't going to reschedule patients, you know, <laughs> when newborns and um, pregnant mamas, expectant mamas are scheduled. I'm not going to reschedule that. I'm teaching a prenatal wellness class tonight here at the center. So um, I don't want to back off on those. So like what can give uh, I move around. And so you make adjustments that way, and it's um, it's absolutely vital in those first couple months or if baby's going through a sleep regression or a growth spurt where they're just like, or teething and they're, they're super fussy at night, just back off on the schedule and make those changes and say, well, okay, this, this might be a weird week. Let's cut things off. Um, not say yes to as many things, say a no to a lot more things and it'll make a big, big difference. Uh, that's something we recommend for sure in that first three months. And uh, I'll go into some more of those things, um, in that episode, but knowing like being up all night, it's hard. It's hard for you. It's hard for baby too. So be really gentle with yourselves. Um, know that those nights are going to happen, you know, as healthy as the baby and as healthy as you might be. Um, they're going to happen, whether it's normal things like teething or some sleep regressions that happen to developmental milestones where baby's learning so much information, even just picking their head up or trying to crawl or walking for sure. There's just so much more information going into their brain in that milestone that it interrupts sleep and it's, it's just tough. Um, or if you know that your baby's been getting sick more often, um, babies get sick and that happens, but there's a lot that you can do either looking at nutritionally, cutting some things out if they're, um, you know, older and they're eating solids or eating other foods, maybe, um, cutting out some things that might be depleting their immune system, whether it's their reaction to dairy or sugars, those kind of things, just eating healthier or finding some remedies that you have on hand to just boost the immune system yourselves as well as, um, for a baby to make sure that, um, those sicknesses don't, start depleting everybody and then one by one <laughs> baby gets sick and then you do and then your partner and then you get stuck in a um, sickness cycle because I see that a lot and that's not fun at all. So with all of that being said, you know, being up all night, it's going to be part of parenthood. It's going to happen. Um, it brings its own level of stress, physical stress on you because you're not sleeping, emotional stress, either because you're depleted from not sleeping the night before or because of what's keeping you up. Um, I guess that's the last parting thing is becoming informed about your baby and about things that'll happen allows you at two in the morning to not freak out as much as if you're wondering what the hell's going on. Um, you're not going to, you don't have the full resources as a pediatrician and knowing everything that's going on with your baby, but knowing some strategies going into how you're going to handle those things. And specifically I'm talking about sicknesses, about what remedies you might have on hand to use, um, what resources to look up on line or on your phone as you're at two in the morning, rather than starting to do the Google search and getting the freak out, um, messages from WebMD and the like that might have you a little more reactionary than, um, what might be at hand, but having those resources in advance is really, really helpful. So knowing that the sleep and nights are going to happen, making changes, either knowing that they might be happening because baby's starting to get sick and taking things off the schedule, or if you do have that night, taking things off your schedule to make it easier so you can recoup is going to be really key. Um, so making sure you have those other resources, whether it's informational or backups um, to take things off the plate or, or do things for you um, are really, really key as well. So if you haven't been through that first or for through that experience yet, hopefully you take um, this message and heed that advice of getting those things lined up in, um, in advance. Or if you've been through a bunch of those nights and know how depleting it is, finding out how to be able to solve those problems and prevent the ones that are preventable. And then on those nights where a kid is just sick and you need to do what you got to do, um, that's what parenthood's also about. It's amazing the resiliency that we have as a parent when our little one needs something, you jump into gear and you just do what you need to do. Um, but the more you can prevent, it can make it uh, that much more peaceful and happy. So know that you're not alone. Reach out uh, to your friends, your family, 
to other resources you might have in the community to be able to help you during these times, get informed, make some changes to make those up all night uh, experiences a little easier. Thank you for joining us today. For more information about this episode and other natural childbirth and parenting topics, please visit us at capwellnesscenter.com or message us on our Facebook page with any questions you might have. We here at the Cap Wellness Center look forward to helping you and your family be as happy and healthy as you can be.